If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an extra supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Michael Stack joining us on the show. Soon to be 25 years old, just made his featherweight debut for Sparta Combat League in Colorado. He finished James Martinez in the first round. Happy to be joined by Michael Stack, one of the rising stars in the western part of the United States. How are you, Michael? I'm great. Thank you for having me on the show, man. Absolutely. Congratulations on the win. I know you have fought your entire career at 155 pounds. You dropped to 145 for the first time a couple weeks back for that fight at Sparta Combat League 75. You get the win. After all the success you've been having at 55, why the the drop to 45? Uh, You know, a lot of my teammates are uh, walking around the same weight that I am, and uh, they, they go to 45 for me to make 55. I don't have to go on a diet. I don't have to stop my routine at all. I pretty much, I, I pretty much just sauna the day of maybe lose about six pounds. So it's really not uh, hard for me to get to 55. Um, it, it was never really a big cut for me. Um, and I thought, you know, if, uh, if there was a chance for me to be able to, to compete at 145 and 155, I thought that would be a, a really uh, cool opportunity. So I wanted to see you know, what my body would do, how it would feel going at 45. How did it feel? How was the first weight cut to 45? Was it what you expected it to be? Was it more difficult? How was that first cut for you? Um, You know, I kind of, I had an idea that it was going to be pretty, pretty hard. Uh, That night, I actually, I woke up with a little bit of anxiety because I had a dream that like the last three pounds were going to be hell to get off. And so I kind of was like, ah, man. So I, I just called my coach and we started about seven in the morning and I didn't get done till probably around two. And then I took a little bit of rest and had to go again at four. So we, we went for six hours straight in just the sauna and a sweatsuit. And then uh, I rested for about two hours and then got the last pound off with a uh, salt bath. So it was pretty rough for six hours being in a sauna and then the, the sweatsuit because I just sat out in the sun for, you know, and that day it was probably 100 degrees out in a sweatsuit and not, you know, with sweatsuit and then another uh, like sweats on and covered in a blanket. So I was, I was in the heat for six hours straight. It was pretty rough. Uh, I think we could definitely do it better next time. Maybe I'll get... Uh, close to the mark for the day of um, I, I cut about nine and a half pounds that day and for my first time it was kind of a rough cut I know a lot of guys can do that for me uh, you know I, I just my body wasn't used to it yet and uh, but I, we got it done and performed well so I think uh, next time we'll just get get it better everyone says the first time's the hardest anyway so did your body feel good in the fight? I mean, obviously you had a great performance. You finished it pretty quickly. Did your body feel good considering the extra weight that you had to cut? Yeah, I mean, I, I, my body felt good. I felt fast. Um, at, one thing I like at 145 is I really I feel really fast. Uh, and I feel like I'm not restricted in, in any way. Um, you know, there were some some things that I noticed that I think – next cut we can we can we can fix and we can get rid of those uh for next time for but for the most part it felt really good so going through and doing my research you've only been competing in the sport for less than three years from what i saw unbeaten as an amateur unbeaten as a professional definitely a lot to be excited about when it comes to your career and your trajectory in the sport of mixed martial arts how did this all begin for you getting into this crazy sport yeah uh so my dad boxed when he was younger, kind of raised me on uh, fighting, and he actually found the UFC before uh, I ever saw it, and he was like, man, you should check this out. I think you'd be really good at it, just because uh, when I was growing up, I got in a lot of fights, mainly because, you know, people, when I was a kid, people kind of uh, looked at me and didn't like me. I think it was maybe my... Uh, my personality is kind of hyper, you know, I was a kid that was like always, you know, running around and 
trying to be the class clown and stuff. And I think a lot of people didn't like that. Maybe I don't know what it is. I've been told I have a punchable face multiple times <laughs> by multiple different people. Word for word, punchable face. So there's got to be some truth in it somewhere. Uh, but, you know, he, he taught me how to fight. And he uh, I got some crazy stories of him, like, teaching me how to fight. Kind of funny. But uh, I just, I grew up and I, I, I learned, you know, you got to either fight or kind of be a pushover. And um, I also kind of found that I liked it a little bit, you know, the, the competition of it. Uh, and so I started preparing myself I, I got into wrestling as a sophomore uh, I started doing sports that were or uh, you know my goal were oriented with my goals in competing um, and then after uh, high school I got into uh, training right off the bat at 18 and then I, I went to college and didn't have a whole lot of money so I didn't have and I didn't have the time to tr- uh, train full time because I didn't have my car with me. So, about I think it was about junior years where I really was able. It was junior year of college where I was really able to uh, full time compete and train, and that's when I that's when I started at 2016 in 2016. So that's kind of how it went about. Well, you put it out there. So tell me the craziest story you got in terms of learning how to fight. Uh so I was I was probably in fifth or sixth grade, and uh, there was we used to play football uh, during recess every day, and I always wanted to be the quarterback, and so did this other kid. He always wanted to be quarterback, and uh, we used to actually be really good friends, but we started to have like a problem with each other. I think it was like a competitive thing, and he, we would talk smack to each other like every day at recess, and. Um, one of the days we were playing football and he, I had my braces. I had just got braces and like I tackled him or something and he gets up and pops in me, pop, punched me right in the mouth. And it, my braces went right through my lips and I didn't want to hit him back because we were friends at the time, but it really bothered me. And if I, when I didn't hit him back, he started telling everyone that I was a, I was a coward. I was a wimp and this and that. So it, became to a point where like I had like there was no other choice I had to fight him the next time something like this happened and I went and told my dad about it and he goes do you even know how to fight because I was gonna I was I was like yeah I'm just gonna fight him and I was like kind of puffing my chest up and he goes do you even know how to fight I go yeah I, I know how to fight he goes all right punch me hit me and I'm thinking this is crazy like why is my dad trying telling me to punch him in the face so I kind of like half-heartedly throw a punch and he smacks it out of the air and starts just berating me telling me that like if you try to throw a punch at someone like that you're gonna get your ass kicked and like tell me I'm kind of a pussy and shit like that (laughs) so now I'm like this is serious I better like start throwing so I'm kind of throwing a little bit faster and he keeps smacking him away keeps smacking him away and I'm just like I'm thinking, I still really don't want to fully hit him. You know, he's my dad. But now he's really berating me, kind of like trying to provoke it out of me a little bit. So now I'm kind of also getting mad mad at him. And I just start throwing as fast as I can. And I finally connect with one. And I'm telling you right now, when I connected with that one punch, I start crying because I just punched my dad in the face. (laughs) And he like, he hugs me. He goes, Good job, son. And then he tells me uh, after that, he goes, all you need to do is as many times in the face as you possibly can. Just punch me as many times in the face. <laughs> we ended up getting, we get, we got a, uh, a fight like a week later. And uh, I, I remember he threw the football at me and I was like, all right, it's time to go. And I, we got in a fight. I ended up getting like a adrenaline where I like had tunnel vision and everything. And I woke up. He was on the ground and I was punching him in the face and I was about that was like the last time I fought him and we actually became good friends after that. <laughs> I don't know how you know that's how fighting kind of works. Wow, unbelievable. Are you still friends with him now? Yeah, I actually am. He we uh we've been friends since 
And I'm actually wrong because after that we fought one more time in middle school. <laughs> but that was the last time we fought, and now we're good friends. Um, his name's Jerry. So I don't really keep in co- uh, contact with him that much. But whenever I go back to my hometown and I, uh, I, I see him, we always say what's up. He's a good dude. In fact, sometimes he'll message me over Facebook or uh, Snapchat. Well, that's so. cool. At least like if you guys go back and ever tell that story, they can, he can at least say that you're a, you're a professional fighter now and, you know, really no shame in that. that no He's texted fighter. me that before. So <laughs> That's so funny. So uh, I want to ask you about this because for those who are learning about Sparta Combat League, listening and watching this for the first time, talk about the promotion because clearly they've done right by you. You fought your entire career in that promotion from your first amateur fight on. What about that organization makes you enjoy fighting for them so much? Uh, I I know a lot of the the people in the organization, Jeff uh, Cisneros, uh, you know, Rob and all the people uh, that kind of organize it and do all the events, they're really, really nice people. They, uh, if you treat them right, they'll treat you right. You know, it's kind of the way things go. Um, from what I can tell, they look out, out for all their fighters, even whether you, you know, you have a good connection with them or not. They pay their fighters pretty good, and they, uh, the venues that they choose. Like I've, I was just thinking about this last night. I've only fought at two venues. Um, the Grizzly Rose twice, and then the rest of the time I've fought at the Budweiser Event Center. Uh, one thing that's cool about the Budweiser Event Center is 20 minutes away from me. So, you know, I don't have to travel all the way uh, down to Denver or across the state to to get, uh, to get go to a good venue for my fight. So, I don't know. I, I really liked just the shows that they've put on and the people that they have in their organization. Now that you have that fight at 45, and, and your t- Justin Gonzalez is one of your teammates, right? Correct. Are you planning on staying there? Because I know Justin just fought on the Contender Series. He just got a win. He didn't get a contract. So one would assume he's going to come back and, and defend his featherweight title. Have you guys had that discussion in terms of, you know, who's going to be in what weight class? Do you, is just, you're just you going to kind of bounce around? Like, what do you think you're going to end up doing moving forward as long as he's there? So, you know, Justin's my teammate, and – for a regional belt, you know, I wouldn't want to fight my teammate right. just to win a regional belt. Um, you know, I, I think having the Sparta belt would be cool. So if I want to get it at 145 or 155, depending if Justin's there or not. I know Justin's out right now for uh, his knee's been bothering him, so he had to go get some surgery on that. I don't know if I should be saying that or not. I don't know if he's cool with me saying it, but... Uh, so he's out right now for a little bit. Uh, I don't know if he's going to go right back to Sparta or try a different promotion, see if he can get his shot back at uh, the UFC. So I don't know what he's planning on doing. But like I said, it, it wouldn't be I, I, it wouldn't be worth it, in my opinion, to fight for a regional belt. If it was the UFC belt and we were both trying to go for it at the same time, you know, Maybe I would say, hey, Justin, what do you think? Should we fight? And if he, if he was, you know, it, it's weird because my dad has, has asked me that before. And, you know, I'm like, nah, man, I really don't like fighting my friends. Even as outside of the sport, I don't like fighting my friends. You know what I mean? I told you about that with uh, Jerry. But we, we weren't friends till after we got into the fight. And then, you know, but that's the way it, se- it seems to go. For me, I just, I, I prefer, you know, if, if we can – do do it differently and I can keep my teammate without having to get the competitiveness in there. That's great. Um, I'm actually not fighting for Sparta this next fight, though. Uh, okay. My next fight, I'll be with, uh, hopefully, LFA. We, They said for sure I'll be on the on the card uh, in October. We just don't have an opponent yet. Oh, cool. All right. Well, that's nice. Get on Access TV, get some more eyeballs on you. That'd be good. Yeah, that, hopefully. I hope so. Is it is it crazy for your dad to kind of go back and, and think about all that from that first story when he taught you how to fight and now you're an undefeated fighter in mixed martial arts, you're you're on the come up, so to speak, as a pro. You know, what is that like between you and your dad knowing where it all began, where you're at right now and where it looks where you look to be going at this point? Yeah, um, you know, I don't know. Uh I, I think it's probably similar uh the way I feel. We we kinda had this this idea and I, we started making goals towards this, um, 
what we towards what we wanted, right? And we started making moves towards it, like starting in wrestling and uh, doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and then and you know making each step count. Uh, I think we we kind of knew that if I chose to go this path, that I could do it. You know what I mean? Both of us. Um, even though there were times when I was growing up, I, I looked at the professional fighters, even when uh, RFA was still around, I'd watch them and stuff like that. I'd be like, wow, these guys are crazy going in there and fighting high level dudes. You know what I mean? And now I'm, you know, I, I consider myself a high level guy and I, I, I consider myself able to compete with uh, guys like in the UFC. I remember one time I was competing, or I wasn't competing, I was watching uh, the UFC at Buffalo Wild Wings. And when I used to watch that, I would try and put myself in the fighter's shoes. I used to get adrenaline when I would watch the UFC fighters fighting because I would put myself in that, I would imagine myself in the cage and I'd get like real crazy adrenaline, like if I was going to go um, compete in a wrestling tournament. One, one of those days, uh, I didn't get that adrenaline, but I kind of had like, I, I don't want to describe it as like a vision, but it was almost like a vision. I saw myself in the UFC cage and the lights and all the people in the crowd. I could, and I never experienced anything like that in my life to up to that point. And I could feel what it was like to be inside that cage and I could feel what it was like to be a UFC fighter. And so, you know, I, I, I know I'm gonna. I know I'm. I know I'm gonna get to the UFC. What I want to do is be the UFC champ. So that's gonna be the hard part. That's gonna be the part that uh, I've been training for this whole time. That's the time. That's the part that I've been sacrificing for. So the UFC. I, I, you know, that's not the. That's not the first. You know, the the only goal. And I think it's the first step to my actual goal is being the UFC champ. It's, it's interesting you say that because we, we talked about Justin fighting on the Contender Series and what has been so fascinating about this particular season of the Contender Series is that we're seeing a lot of guys who are 6-0, and 5-0, and even 4-0 and get their opportunities to fight in front of Dana White and Shelby and Mick and you know seeing that, do you feel like your time could be coming soon? Like, Do you see that door opening a little bit more than you would have, say, nine months ago? Yeah, I mean, I've talked to a, uh, a couple guys um, – with Iridium Sports, they said that they try to get, they try to get their guys into the UFC or on the Contender Series at five and up. That they have had success in that, and that um, you know, it's a lot of it is putting on exciting fights, being marketable, being fun to watch, and uh, I think that I have that. I think I have that. Um, I don't know what you would call it, but there is a certain uh, formula for the fighters that I believe the UFC is looking for, and I believe I have what it takes. So, When it comes to your career, and I can comfortably ask this question because, I mean, you have a date sort of in mind for when your next fight is, but you don't have an opponent on the books, so to speak. But mm -hmm. playing the look-ahead game, because you visualize yourself being in that octagon at, at one point in your life, and now you have this tunnel vision to go towards it. So as someone who's striving to be a world champion in the UFC, when you look to the future and you see guys in the UFC or Bellator or any of these other major organizations worldwide, who's a guy that you watch in any of these organizations and say to yourself, man, I would love to fight that guy someday. Like, that would be a dream for me to fight that guy. You know, who sticks out to you at 55 or 45 that you just want to get in there with someday and, and just scrap with just because it would be such a cool experience and you'd learn a lot from it? Yeah, I don't know if you're you're gonna to be too excited about my answer. Uh, I think about fighting Max Holloway a lot. Uh, guys in the top, you know, the top five, top, uh, yeah, probably the top five, you know, top three even. Um, I think about fighting those guys because those those are the guys that on any given day they could probably beat each other. You know what I mean? Like if you look at the UFC guys that came into the UFC with perfect records. Ben Askren, Justin Gaethje and stuff, you know, it's it's impressive that Khabib has had his perfect record for so long. I'm not a big Khabib fan, but just the fact that he's been able to maintain a perfect record in the UFC, topping the top or fighting the top five guys, like that's, that's an impressive thing because even guys like Ben Askren, who was supposed to have better wrestling than Khabib, 
doesn't have his. You know what I mean? Justin Gaethje, who is a phenomenal fighter, and I've trained with him, um, he doesn't have his anymore. You know what I mean? So I, I imagine myself fighting guys like Khabib, Tony Ferguson, uh, Max Holloway, um, just to get these guys that are the top of the top, you know, because those are guys that you're going to want to beat anyways. Those are the guys that you, you know you got some grit. You have you have some fight if you can beat any of those top five guys. I All like right. it, man. I like it a lot. Michael Stack, keep your eye on him, ladies and gentlemen. Unbeaten throughout his entire career in Sparta Combat League. He's uh, going to be making his LFA debut in October. Uh, opponent TBD at this point. But uh, great to chat with you, Michael. Before I let you go, let the folks watching know where they can keep up with you in your career via social media. Any shout-outs, anything else you want to get off your chest, the floor is yours, man. All right. Hey, and thanks again for having me on this show. It's been great. Uh, my uh, Instagram is going to be Michael Stack underscore MMA. Uh, you can contact me on Facebook, just Michael Stack. And same with my Twitter, Michael Stack underscore MMA. How is your Thank Twitter game, man? Uh, I just uh, made one about, I don't know, four months ago. And I feel like I'm pretty funny. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know if my 20 followers, how they feel about it. I get about one like, two, three likes every uh, every twit, tweet whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, man. And like the UFC, they, the social media game, especially Twitter is very important. So as long as you're going through the motions and at least getting it out there, that's, that's half the battle. And then once you get there, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I uh, right. appreciate it, man. Continued success. And I'm sure this won't be the last time we, we have conversations, man. Thank you for the time. Thank you.